car expense. What's down wrong? <laughs> now, where are we at? Now, probably one of the most recent developments is the, the fallout between uh, Vegan Cheetah and the Blue Wren. Uh, you know, I, I clearly uh, gave a lot of my friends in the BYC an, an ultimatum. Um, you know, disassociate you, yourself from uh, certain certain people, or I won't associate with you. And you know, I, I clearly you know said that to Cheetah in you know three three separate messages, and um, yeah, you know he, he's he's chosen his path, so I've chosen mine. And you know what that gives me the ability to do is you know basically represent my own ideologies. Now, in the past, you know, I had a, a just the the thinking that you know there's no limit to what a man can achieve if he doesn't mind who gets the credit. And obviously, you know, using uh, vegan cheetahs platform, you know, as I've done for a long time, um, you know, it was a great way of you know promoting a, a form of vegan outreach. I guess one of the disadvantages in using cheetah is that. Um, certain misrepresentations were made about the ideology of the, the vegan umbrella because he truly didn't really understand it. You know, if you didn't come up with it, you don't understand it, you can't represent it. Okay? And, you know, quite publicly, he sort of, you know, I guess embarrassed the concept to the point of, you know, it being labelled the umbrella. So, you know, I would uh, perhaps say that the, the vegan cheater, you know, he certainly invented the umbrella. <laughs> and umbrellaism, <laughs> but you know the ide ideology that I came up with was you know the um, you know the vegan umbrella, and you know this was a ideology that was sole intention was a form of vegan outreach, right? Um, a, a way of attracting and retaining new vegans. Uh, it was uh, a way in which to provide sense of unity um, to all the different vegan subtypes um, you know, as we know like you know this high carb low fat raw to four 80 10 10 you know starch solution dietary reasons you know ethical environmental there's so many you know different subtypes of uh, vegans but you know what what was essential is that we all became you know one under the umbrella you know when we needed to so is that you know correct you know, I came up with it to provide a sense of unity, and that, you know, that that's, that's, that was the sole intention. And it and it stems from a video I did a couple of years ago, and that video is uh, named "Divided by Definition" or "Vegans Are Divided by Definition." And yeah, like it was like the analogy I used back then was that you know, uh, there's so many different subtypes of surfing, yet they can all unite as one. And all identify as surfers to, you know, show a, you know, strength in numbers when they need to protest something or, you know, they need to come together for whatever reason. And yeah, I, I just thought that, you know, once the VYC understands the collective power, you know, of a hundred thousand people, you know, that's when we can, you know, truly move, you know, veganism forward, and that's when we can start to, you know, gain some real-world momentum. So it was also to you know, create a culture of inclusion rather than a culture of exclusion. Because when I came to veganism, you know, back in, I think it was 2013, um, it was, yeah, it was truly a very sort of judgmental place. And it wasn't, you know, open and, you know, welcome to new vegans. You know, you always, you, know, you, you were labelled just a new... <laughs> oh, this guy's obviously undercarved, carved the fuck up, you know, all this sort of rhetoric. And, you know, even to the point where you could be a, you know, a dietary vegan, eating a 100% deep vegan diet, but because, you know, you hadn't made an ethical connection, um, you know, you were labelled plant-based. It's just, what the fuck, you know, like, this isn't the best business model for attracting and retaining new vegans. And, and you know, this is... What I saw was 
everyone was lying. <laughs> like all these, especially on you now, and you know, you can see in the comments section, everyone's sort of virtue signaling to each other, but you know, that they're vegan and blah, blah, blah. But a lot of them were just here for the drama and you know, none of them were vegan and everyone was lying to each other. And that, that's clearly evident since the uh, umbrella concept has been put forward. You know, a lot of people have, you know, said, yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not vegan, I'm this, I'm not, you know, it, it's, and it's, and what it's done is I think it's, it's healthy. It's, it's just created a more truthful platform. And, you know, you tell one lie, you know, it's, it's quite easy to tell a few more and then, you know, lo and behold, you'll turn into someone like Olga, you know, just a, a pathological liar. And, you know, this is, you know, inherently one of the, the problems that I saw and I thought, you know, there's, a, there's an absolute, you know, necessity for this. And, you know, I was also sick of, you know, vegans preaching to the converted, you know, vegans preaching to, you know, vegans. And, you know, that, that business model isn't for the advancement of veganism. That's the, for the advancement of, you know, the individual's channel, you know, to promote their, their e-book, you know, their cookbook, their clicks, likes, subscribe, shares. And, yeah, it's, uh, you know, basically to, to get away from that, you know, pyramid scheme business model. And this is to truly advance and, and, and push, you know, veganism to those that are not vegan. And veganism, you know, what I wanted to create was a, a culture of inclusion, not exclusion. Not like, oh, you're a new fuck off, you wouldn't have a clue. And I've been guilty of it myself, but... Um, it was to, to provide a culture of inclusion. So, you know, people who are, you know, have gone against, you know, a, a lifetime of indoctrination, you know, the, all their family, all their friends, you know, telling them not to go vegan. But they've even taken one step towards veganism being, you know, even as simple as something as a, a, a Monday vegan, you know, a, a weekday vegan, you know, whatever the case may be. These people, you know, should be able to come to this community and, you know, be afforded, you know, some protection under the vegan umbrella. They, they need to be included in the community. They need to, you know, feel welcome and they need to be able to identify as a member of the community. Now, the mistake Vegan Cheatham, you know, made was that, you know, he was saying that a, a weekday vegan is a vegan. They're, they're clearly not, you know, like if you're eating chicken and KFC on the weekend, and, you know, you're not vegan. You're a vegan subtype, and that, that's what I was hoping to create, you know, 50 shades of grey. And, you know, if veganism is a black and white issue, I just wanted to increase, you know, have these steps towards veganism. You know, they start as vegan curious or pre-vegan, then they go to vegan curious, they, you know, meatless Monday vegan. It was a way of you know, giving people a sense of identity because that's essential for any, you know, culture that, you know, people have a sense of belonging, a sense of identity, you know, from belonging to that culture. And it was also a way in which, you know, established vegans could, uh, you know, easily identify where these new vegans were at on their journey so they could be, you know, educated or vegetated, um, as you could say. Um, so, you know, really it was set out to attract and retain new vegans because I've also found that, you know, one of the most damaging things to the movement was that, you know, people come in, they try veganism for, a, you know, a short period of time and then they, you know, they don't get the correct support, they don't get the correct information and education and then they leave veganism and then they make their, you know, big video saying I'm not vegan anymore, blah, blah, blah. And really it was just sort of, you know, they just didn't have the education to make the right decision. Um, so, yeah, that, that's the umbrella, vegan umbrella concept. Um, the, the 50 Shades of Grey, it was so that we weren't putting forward a, uh, you know, a black and white issue, you know, that because people would always, you know, just turn away from that because they didn't have the education to make the right decision. Whereas if you provide steps to that next level, you know, whether there be 50 steps, it's, it's just easier for people to achieve. And, you know, one of the, the commentators came up with a, a good acronym. I was spelling it just as the shade of grey. And they said, look, spell it G-R-E-A, you know, gradually reducing eating animals. So 50 shades of that, you know, fantastic, you know, 
what's there to hate about you know trying to you know get people to you know reduce their animal consumption new new people to veganism not, you know it, it can't be criticized but if it's misrepresented like vegan cheetah did I can understand why people you know layer with the, the, the you know the dumb umbrella you know obviously you've, you've got you know ethical vegans that are fully behind the umbrella concept like vegan revolution and so forth you know, Freely's behind the umbrella concept. Um, Doreen Wright is behind the umbrella concept. You know, and, and this is what they, they, they practice in their, their own lives. But, you know, what we've done is just clearly identified it. And also, you know, the, the, the strength of uni, I've always been an advocate of the VYC, the vegan YouTube community, that we, we do come together as a group. This is essential, you know, you know, Divided we fall, united we stand. And once we come together, you know, we will have a snowballing effect and there will be real benefits as, of being a member of the, the, the v, vegan YouTube community, the, the VYC. And, you know, let's just imagine 100,000 people investing $5 a week, direct debited from your bank account if you can afford to. You can click on and off, you know, whenever you like. But this would create real world change. You know, we can talk about it or we can be about it. And if you want to be about it, you know, nothing's free in this world. You know, it, it takes time, it takes knowledge, it takes investment. And, you know, five dollars a week, the price of a cup of coffee from a hundred thousand people is five hundred thousand dollars a week. That's half a million dollars a week. That's that's momentum. You know, in order for veganism to go mainstream or get, you know, a, a better grip on, you know, mainstream, we have to be in Main Street. There has to be, you know, vegan cafes everywhere. So this this could be, you know, funding, you know, five, you know, $100,000, $90,000 vegan businesses per week. That's 250 vegan businesses a year. And, you know, let's look at it, you know, as a level of protection you know, let's say if you're having any, you know, dramas of, you know, people stalking you or anything like this within the VYC, imagine what half a million dollars, you know, put towards some sort of legal team, you know, could do. There isn't anything you couldn't do with half a million dollars a week, you know, people, are, you know, threatening members of the VYC, you know what I mean? We'd be able to come down on them like a ton of bricks, literally. And, you know, that's the, that's, that's the benefit of belonging to the VYC. You know, because we just can't stand for these, you know, cyber bully attacks. And, you know, this is going to be a thing of the future. And, you know, we're almost lucky to go through it now because we can clearly identify it as a problem and, you know, work at, you know, strategies and how we, you know, get past this. So, you know, $5 a week from 100,000 vegans or, you know, people who are plant-based or, you know, looking to make that connection, but their connection or contribution is $5 a week at the moment. You know they're working towards something. You know nothing would make me happier if it was you know a uh, hundred thousand non-vegans, you know plant-based people who are you know are, are making more of an effort and more of a contribution to veganism than the vegans, because uh, vegans do a lot of yapping. They don't, they don't actually don't actually do anything. You know what I mean? And people have to.